Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to today's video. It is a rainy day in Southern California, which for me is always a plus. In today's video, I'm actually going to show you guys my 1987 Honda Aero 50. I got this about a month ago. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll kind of know. So I ended up actually crashing the scooter days after I got it running. Me being an unexperienced driver or rider of a scooter, I ended up running it straight into a wall. <laughs> Luckily I was fine, sadly the scooter was not, and I bent the front fork. So I'll show you guys everything I'd done to it to get it running, and everything I had to do to end up replacing the bent fork. Okay, so this is my 1987 Honda Aero 50 scooter. It came with about 20 original miles, and since I've had it for about a month, I put about 10 on it, so it's sitting at about 30 miles. So, to get it running, all I did was clean out the gas tank since there was a bit of rust in it, put a new spark plug, change out the oil, and clean out the carburetor. That was pretty much it, and it immediately started up with about no hesitation. So, once I got it running, then I crashed it, and so I actually ended up bending the front fork. <laughs> which is this part that actually makes it steer. So it's kind of like a bike. There's a bar and then it goes to a U shape where the wheel connects and I actually bent that and it had like a bunch of camber and it was undrivable obviously. So to fix that, I pretty much had to remove all the covers off of the entire scooter and pull out the fork. Now that required the entire front of the scooter to be just gone. So the whole wheel shock and all that was taken off of the scooter. When it came to fixing the fork, the most difficult thing was having to deal with bolts that have literally not been removed in about 30 years, and I stripped a lot of bolts. Luckily, there's a company called Partzilla that carries OEM replacements for Honda scooter bolts, but just as an example, you can see right in there, if it'll focus, this bolt right here, I stripped those bolts four of them, which there's only four. So I stripped every single one of those bolts trying to remove those lights, and it was a pain. I also stripped some of the bolts that had to do with the fork when connecting to the shock, and I also stripped a few of other bolts just for miscellaneous panels and stuff like that. While I was just about to get all put back together, I ended up breaking this handle because everything on the scooter is so brittle and old from just sitting that everything just breaks so easily. Now, even though I crashed it, literally that did not get affected at all when it hit the floor. It just randomly broke putting the cable back to the brakes. So just to give you guys a little overview, so you have a few main compartments. So you have this main compartment right here, which you can put, I guess, your wallet and your phone in. You have this little key opener right here. All right, so from that little lock, you can actually open up this little compartment. So this is the gas tank, you have your battery, and then it's a oil fill reservoir. And then right here on the side, you have a little storage compartment as well. I keep my owner's manual in there just in case while I'm riding it, I need to check something in case something breaks. So future plans that I have for this is obviously going to be lowering it and doing like a crazy exhaust similar to this. I don't want to just kind of make my own scooter. I want to recreate a genuine Bozozoku scooter like they win Japan with the really tall exhaust, the super low bodies, the crazy aero, the crazy seat covers, paint design, all that stuff. Now, a lot of that stuff isn't going to be happening soon. Maybe in the next four to five months, I'll start lowering it, getting, you know, color change, all that stuff. But for now, I want to do just small mod and enjoy it as is right now since obviously I haven't been able to really do that. You're a dumbass. There are a few problems with it. So the carburetor was really gunked up when we cleaned it. And when you start up the scooter when it's cold and let it run and then turn it off, it'll actually leak a bunch of gas out where the air intake is. So you can kind of see right there if it'll focus. I don't actually run an air intake only because when you start it up, it's cold, it comes right out the air intake. I don't want gas to soak up my air filter and then ruin it. So in the next few videos, I'll actually be showing you guys how to replace a carburetor, installing a new gasket for the air intake as well as the new air intake filter. That is the one main thing we have to do to get this to be drivable. So it runs great as is. There's only one problem, because the carburetor is stuck open, it does not idle, so you constantly have to give it gas to keep it running. So when you're at a stop sign or 
something, it's gonna immediately die, and then you have to sit there trying to get start for about 30 seconds, and it's just not the situation you wanna be when you're riding this around town. So before we can start riding it a lot more, I wanna get this able to run really good, idle properly, and be reliable. There's also a few small electrical issues with it. Stuff is, stuff not being connected, so I'll show you guys here. Okay, so as you see, so if you put your hand on the brake, and you squeeze it, this will light up, and then you have your blinkers here, which are back there, and then on the sides there. So if you do the left one, nothing happens, okay? But if you do the right one, it'll actually start blinking. Now, to get the left one to blink, you have to actually hold it. So it's just small stuff like that to make it easier to ride and drive around town. Everything is very easy and I have most of the parts I need to fix this. Um, I actually have brand new bulbs for every single light and turn signal on the scooter. And then as I said, I have the new carburetor with new gaskets, new air intake, new air filter. And then I also have a few aftermarket stuff like one of the one things I've seen they do in Japan is they do underglow all along the bottom of this. So I actually bought an underglow and I'll be showing you guys how you wire it up and then you can have underglow on your scooter. So as I said, the scooter does start. So I'll show you guys it starting right now. The scooter does start and run very well. It just isn't idle. So to start it, you just flip this switch right here. You put your hand on the brake and then you'll press this yellow button. But the only difference is we actually have to give it gas because of the carburetor. So I typically give gas, put my hand on. So as you saw there, it runs pretty good. I just need to give it gas so it doesn't die. At the end, when it just died, I literally just stopped giving it gas and it just died. For now, I'm just gonna be doing small maintenances and small mods here and there just to in either improve the riding experience or just fix any problems we have along the way. It'll be a few months before I really start getting serious about this and lowering it color change, all that stuff. But I do have some crazy plans of doing like a really tall exhaust and um, a really crazy design, super low, really crazy arrow that's like all the way up there. Damn. Also, I forgot to mention that I also added these peace sign mirrors. I picked these up at Kruber for like 20 bucks from Japan and I thought it was just a small addition. Eventually I want to have them painted so as they match everything else on the scooter. This was actually the original mirror. It's just a basic boring scooter mirror. So I thought this was like a fun little touch just for now just to kind of give it my own small look. That is the new build. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I said in the next few weeks I'll be showing you guys how to do new carburetor, underglow, replace all light bulbs and just anything else I do on the scooter. But yeah so if you guys enjoyed like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.